Hello, my creative friends! Olga Sobi here, and welcome to new fluid acrylic painting tutorial. Today, we're gonna do a sun mixed media project, and this one's gonna be a lot of fun because I want to try something new. I wanna use my hoops uh, in a new way. We're gonna use them to create a separation or separate fragments inside of the painting. And with this separation, I want to achieve the effect of radiance that comes from the center of my painting. And once my fluid acrylics are dry, I'm gonna use a stencil. I got the new one, this one is so pretty. So I'm gonna use it to create a texture design that's gonna represent the sun with all this light that comes from it. So let's see how this one goes. Without further ado, let's get started. Sunkist is a secret message today, and now let's get started with the creating this radiance or sunlight effect coming from the center. I'm gonna work from the outside towards the center, and I'm gonna use the biggest hoop that I have. To emphasize this radiance effect, I'm also gonna implement the gradient from lighter to darker. So the lightest is in the center and it goes towards the darker color on the outside. This is the same combination of colors, except for this one has the most white, little white, no white, and this one has a little black. So moving from tints to shade of the same color, this is the, gonna be, I think, the most perfect gradient for this painting. And on the outside, of course, we're gonna add the darkest one. And I also want to add a couple drops of Prussian blue or even darker areas. I also want to add a couple touches of violet. I think it will look very interesting on the outer parts of this one. And let's blow it out. Next step, using a little bit of gold to create the border between this section and the next one, and the previous one, I should say. And we are taking one color lighter. I also want to add inside of this one, I want to add a couple drops of darker, just so my colors is not too flat. A couple drops of lighter one. Closer to my white, I want to have a little bit of, close to my gold, a little bit of white. A couple drops of iridescent color. You can see that I have my color palette quite thought through, and I try to do it for pretty much all of my paintings. I like to plan it in advance. Also for the gold, I want to have two different types. One is brighter, one is a little more orange, one is a little more yellow. Also gonna, I think it's gonna look the most interesting for this painting. Okay, now same idea, I'm gonna blow out this one towards the top and from the center towards the bottom. So now I'm going to carefully lift up the ring. Oh, beautiful! See, this is working really cool so far. So I'm going to do the same step on the other side. First create the darker part on the outer edge. And then we're going to do one inside here. So using all exact the same colors, exact the same steps, adding a little bit of darker color inside of this one and a little bit of lighter. So see there is a little bit of texture inside of this section. Same, adding a little bit of this iridescent blue-green. I really like how it shines here. 
a little bit of white to brighten it up and another gold A lot of the gold, I see that I have gotten a bit of gold on this side. There was not part of the plan and not enough gold here. So let's just do it. Let's add a little more and try again. And then I might just paint over this section when it dry. If I'm not gonna like this gold here. Okay, that's better. With this extra gold here, I'm gonna try to actually remove it with the empty syringe. I don't know if that's gonna do the trick and remove it completely, but we're gonna try. I think that worked quite well, so on the empty spot, now I'm adding the same color here. I have a little bit of gold left there, but that's fine. Doesn't need to be perfect. Let's remove this one. See, this spot is a little not perfect, but we're gonna leave it as is for now. Next step of our gradient, I'm gonna use the same ring and place it over here. Let's try to be as close to the center as possible. So before I had to move it, but at this time it's gonna stay here. I'm gonna do this part and this part. And last is gonna be this one in the center. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna remove this paint. I think it's just fine if it stays. We're gonna add gold as close to the border as possible. Okay, I see what's the problem here. This hoop is not fully leveled. And we're gonna use a lighter color. We already have darker color here, so don't need to add that, but we're gonna add a little bit of lighter color. So we're slowly moving from dark to light. So sort of got the same problem here, a lot of gold escaped and I'm trying to decide whether it's a bad thing or maybe it's a good thing, just makes it this whole form is a little less uniform. But we're gonna leave it as is for now and let's use the smallest ring. I wanted to have very little gold because it's gonna be a main background for our stencil. So. And stencil is gonna be primarily gold, so golden gold is not gonna look too exciting. So with this one need very little gold and mostly blue. Last blowout, so this time I need to move all the way around. So be very careful because for this one I'm not using my spinner. It's gonna be a little harder to blow in a circular motion, but it should work because this is a pretty small size. Let's see. I think I got a bit too much paint in the center, so I'm gonna remove a little bit of it. The problem is that when you have too much, the paint will try to level out and it will really shift your design. So having too much is definitely not the best idea. Before removing it, I think I wanna spin it. Carefully lift up, pop the film. And 
This is super cool. I used definitely too much gold, gotta admit. I don't really like how this part of the painting looks, so I'm gonna try to place my biggest hoop on again. And I'm just gonna blow out this section. I'm not gonna keep it as two separate sections, it's gonna be just one. And adding just a little more paint, we'll get that gold moving. And it will create a bit more maybe expanding movement from here. Try to literally emphasize this circular movement with my finger. I definitely like it better now, even though I had to step away from my initial idea with having fragments of this uh, gradient all the way to the edge but i think having this this part sort of shining out works better here and this way i only have one really vibrant gold element because having two on each side was too much now it's more interesting and even like this it looks like a quite a complete painting maybe with a little more white and that will be done but let's take a look with our stencil oh dropping stuff with the stencil fits perfectly inside of this inner circle and just trying to visualize and it's literally gonna look like it's grow glowing maybe even growing now let's let it dry and i will be right back to do the stencil application it has dried really nicely beautiful pops of gold all over and now adding the stencil right in the center of the design and fixating it in place with the masking tape. Next I'm adding a very thin layer of gloss gel on top of my stencil. And on top of that gel I add the iridescent gold. It's the same that I used in my pour, but I'm scooping it right out of the jar. So this one is not mixed with water. Next, I want to try adding iridescent red. It will blend with gold, giving me this beautiful soft orange that will create amazing contrast with my blue turquoise base. I want to try a new thing for this mandala. I gently dab my palette knife to create a new kind of texture and blend in the colors a little more. This turned out magnificent. I love the perfect blend of color from the center to the outer edges of mandala. And finally, I'm adding the leftover paint that's overmixed with uh, gel from the stencil and adding some texture on the ring around it. Hey guys, so here it is dry, finished, and I used a little spray varnish at this time just to add a little bit of gloss, but still keep all the texture that I created in my designs. And I think this painting, it has very modern look, but at the same time, it has a little bit of boho style vibe. What do you think? And by the way, this turned out to be just the perfect tribute painting to this year's summer solstice. And I hope you feel a little sun-kissed after watching this tutorial. I have to say, I just really love how the texture on my abstract sun inspired mandala turned out so i did this dabbing motion when i applied my gel and paint and it created little picks in the design it also blended the paint so beautifully so i love it so much better totally gonna do it again and i had a little leftover of this paint mixed with gel from my stencil application and i added that paint on that ring to also create a little texture you can see it's all so nice and balanced together and by the way, for this ring, I made it a little more narrow because when it was thicker, it was just still in too much from this mandala design in the center. So now I think it's in perfect balance. And by the way, it looks like it has a little crown right here inside of this inner swirl. You see that? I think it looks really cool. 
with the splash and pop of energy coming towards the edges. And the composition for this painting worked out not as planned initially. I wasn't able to create this smooth gradient from darker to lighter in the center with rings in between. I do still have a little bit of this gradient, but it's just not as smooth and not as defined. And learning to go with the flow and as challenging as it is sometimes allowing myself to improvise. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial with some mixed media techniques and texture application and just always trying something new, experimenting. Love sharing it with you guys. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. As always, we'll talk to you in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. Take care, create with passion, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.